this is, uh, this is a patient with mitral valve prolapse who has a severe leaking in their mitral valve and we're using a new tool to get a three-dimensional image of the valve to help uh, Dr. Harris repair the valve uh, appropriately. This is the usual image that we have with the standard equipment that we have and then with a few manipulations of the machine here we can get a three-dimensional picture. And now we're going to create an image that looks identical to what uh, Dr. Harris is going to see when he opens the heart to do his repair. And this is the segment of the, the valve that's prolapsed and it's given this patient the, uh, the leak. And he'll be able to go in and, and zoom in on that particular segment and uh, fix the problem. And with this, he, we were able to identify that segment, you know, tremendous uh, more accuracy than we were able to do with our uh, traditional equipment. Her cardiologist, in the course of evaluating her, got an echocardiogram and it shows that her mitral valve leaks severely. Perhaps she has a, a little bit of um, a mild decrease in the pumping strength of her, of her left ventricle. There's a lot of strong uh, support in the medical literature. Studies, well studies from everywhere, but some good studies from uh, the Mayo Clinic uh, and other uh, places that, that, that show us that people with Severe leakage of their mitral valve have a shortened life expectancy. Even if their heart is pumping normally and even if they don't have any symptoms because eventually pretty much everybody with severe leakage of this valve, this particular valve between the left collecting chamber and pumping chamber will have changes that occur in their pumping chamber. It'll get weaker, it'll get bigger and they'll eventually have heart failure. And we know that people, asymptomatic people that have severe leakage of the mitral valve have about a, depending on what study you read, one and a half to two percent per year risk of cardiac death related to that, which is kind of scary. Anybody with severe uh, leakage of their mitral valve benefits from correction of that problem. And the only effective way to deal with it is with surgery. And there are two ways of dealing with a leaking mitral valve. One way is to just operate on a patient and take out the valve and put in a new valve. And in some cases that's okay, but there are a lot of studies, again, with hundreds and maybe even probably really thousands of patients worth of data that shows that people who have repair of their mitral valve have a better long-term survival than people that undergo replacement of their mitral valve. And um, here at Baptist, I, I, um, I have a special interest in mitral valve surgery and uh, particularly repair of the mitral valve. And so we don't, re we don't replace many leaking mitral valves. Uh, very uncommon. We always try to repair them and most of the time, I'd say 90% or better, we, we do re repair them rather than replace them. And the benefit is that the patient is left retrograde. The patient's left with, with their own valve tissue that they were born with. And they avoid uh, long-term anticoagulation potentially with Coumadin and they enjoy a survival advantage. We always use transesophageal echocardiography to, to image the heart and the, and the mitral valve when we do these kind of cases. The benefit of, of transesophageal echocardiography is that we get a really nice picture of the mitral valve. That allows us to see the, the valve functioning you know, as it is in the heart with it beating and full of blood and so on. And that helps me to do a little bit of planning as to technique and, and what technique I'm going to use to repair the valve. So the TE helps us with that. Well, the 3D imaging is just a whole nother leap forward in technology. It, it acquires 3D images of the valve, so we're not looking at a two-dimensional image anymore. The cardiologist is actually 
is able to, to image the valve and look at it in, in a way that's very similar to the way I'm going to be looking at it with my own eyes. It just really adds a whole other dimension to accurately assessing the valve and the pathology of the valve and the dysfunction of the valve. And then just as importantly, we'll use that imaging after we do the operation, after we do the repair, while we're in the operating room to, to see what we've done. Because when I'm looking at the valve, the heart is stopped, it's empty, and the valve is just sitting there. So there's some art to repairing the valve and sort of knowing in your mind how that valve is going to look and function when the heart's full and beating again. Well, now we get to see what it looks like literally with this 3, 3D echo, and we get to know on the front end, have we, you know, do we have a satisfactory repair? Because if we don't have a satisfactory repair, the options, you know, we will always go back in and either re-repair, uh, you know, fix what, what we didn't get quite right on the first end, or, you know, you might have to replace the valve. But the goal here, this lady came with leaking mitral valve, and she's going to leave the operating room with no leakage of her mitral valve. And that's the main goal. And then number two after that is to repair it. But if, you know, if anybody has leakage and it can't be repaired properly, then you need to replace. It takes everybody. All the way from Dr. Upton running good anesthesia to Kaneem assisting me and Wanda and Velma. I mean, it's just a, it's a, it's a team. It's, there's certainly no I in team and that is 110% true in the cardiac operating room. It takes everybody doing their job just right to make things come out right. And we're lucky we've got that here.